Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, at first, I want to express my thanks to the organizers, particularly Governor and others, uh, organizers of this uh, scientific program. It is really an honor for me to get a presentation at the, this annual conference. My topic is polypharmacy and deprescription issues and concerns. Uh, during the sixth uh, um, conference uh, in Kolkata, I presented uh, a similar paper on deprescription. During the last few years, uh, I have realized during uh, my private practice that this is actually a very important issue nowadays. Because as an internist, we get uh, many cases with so many complications, like uh, an example, a patient with diabetes mellitus having neuropathy, ischemic heart disease, hypertension, and nephropathy. So he consults so many doctors and having a big list of uh, drugs, it is really a very problematic for a patient to take so many drugs. So I have decided to present the same, like same paper with adding polypharmacy, which is also related with this. So actually uh, my presentation, the segments will be evolution of medicine as a science, about prescription and polypharmacy, particularly, especially in case of elderly persons. And what is deeper prescription, why it is important and how it is to be done. If we look back uh, to the history of medicine, actually we do not know uh, regarding when from this our medical science started. Uh, if we look there in different regions, different physicians, we will get some informations. Uh, in Indian region also some physicians like Charak and Sutra, they had many contributions in medical science. We know about Hippocrates. Hippocrates, he is considered to be father of medicine because he has contribution in different fields of medicine. He defined the role of physician, not only uh, writing prescription, he said he, a physician must have at least two objectives in view regarding the disease. Namely, he has to do some good to the patient or not do any harm to the patient. So we do not, we cannot do any harm to the patient. So this is purposefully, I have kept this slide in Bengali. Uh, Chorok in same, almost in the similar period in 400 to 300 before Christ, he described the, what, are the, what should be the qualities of a good doctor. What are the responsibilities of a doctor? One of the important responsibility of a doctor is not to prescribe drugs to a healthy person. So this is a very important responsibility of a uh, physician. So these are the important, some of examples of some important physicians. If we look at history, these are the some insti medical institutions of medical science of ancient to uh, present time. Behind the medical science, other than physicians, technology is providing a very important role. You look at this moment, physical attendance is gradually becoming less and less. But at this time, uh, almost thousands of audience are listening to our presentation all over the world, and particularly India, Bangladesh, and many other regions. So technology has a very important role in medical science. How, what is modern medicine? So when to treat a disease, how to relieve symptoms, how to manage a condition, not all medicans, medi medications are to be taken lifelong period. So during prescribing uh, medicine, the rational approach is to establish a diagnosis, to decide the therapeutic goal, and choosing the appropriate drugs. This is very important of rationality. 
so if you, look, you know the what is prescription many words of medical science these are derived from ancient greek and uh, other uh, egyptian and other latin words so the prescription means write in a, in writing so an order that must be written down before a compound drug is to be dispensed or prepared so this is prescription we know what should be the uh, components of an ideal prescription this should be kept in an ideal prescription with the specification of patients date and drugs how sh this should be dispensed what are the rules to be given so what are the factors to be considered uh, before writing a prescription so there are different factors balancing benefits and harms so seriousness of symptoms which is to be considered what is the efficacy of the drug what are the potential adverse effects of the drugs what are the likelihood of the adverse effects efficacy and safety of alternative on non drug this should be also considered regarding uh, present current time we know there is a environmental change this is a hot topic there is we know there is a transition on in world population demography is also since 1990 life expectancy has increased by 43% for all ages in 1900 the life expectancy was almost uh, around 50 years in 1988 it has become 75 years so persons over the 65 years are the fastest growing uh, population in usa not only usa in many countries of the world in 1900 it was around 400 4000 population in 1980 it has become 11% it is expected that in in 2030 it will be the 20 20 percent of the population so this is a population pyramid of bangladesh uh, in 2021 still young person is more but gradually the old people more than 65 years uh, is increasing uh, it is similar in india also almost similar but you look in japan the pyramid is almost gradually becoming re reverse the elderly people in japan is gradually becoming more than the young adults so the population this older citizens in different regions are gradually increasing so this changing population or demography in it is a, in bangladesh in life expectancy has risen, risen from 49 years to now currently it is 72 years approximately 8.4% of the population is aged over the 60 years at present by 20, 2050 median age may rise to 34.8 years with 16% of population over the 16 years of age so look our prime minister she is traveling in, in her village with her grandchildren at the age of 71 years Joe Biden, he is now 79 years old. Mahathir bin Mohammed, he is riding a cycle at the age of 94 years. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Prime Minister of India, he is, she, he is also possibly uh, 71 years old. So they have our many Prime Ministers uh, and Presidents, they are more than 70 years old. So prescribing in elderly, uh, we are to keep some points in mind. that they have reduced drug elimin elimination increased sensitivity to many drugs more drug interactions lower strategy starting doses is required and there is drug adherence is also less they have some other uh, pharmacokinetics due to have many reasons including having multiple comorbidities uh, and polypharmacy and other other contributing factors so during prescribing uh, medication in elderly people uh, uh, they are a good numbers they are almost one fifth of adult populations are treated with polypharmacy polypharmacy when more than five drugs are prescribed in a prescription it is cost to be polypharmacy 
it has been found that in UK, almost 70% of the prescriptions contain five to nine drugs and 9.7% contain more than uh, 10 drugs. So uh, it, in case of elderly, it increases the risk of adverse uh, reactions, drug interactions, number of hospitalization, cost is increased, even death. So it, there is, it has been found that there is increased risk for fall by 50% due to polypharmacy. Uh, avoiding simply benzodiazepines in elderly person, it can reduce the fracture of hip by 10%. So it is a very important risk factor for multiple fractures, uh, like very hip fracture like that. So what is polypharmacy? Use of five or more prescribed or uh, over-the-counter drug therapies, this is called uh, polypharmacy. But when it is more than 10, it is called excessive polypharmacy. But not always this polypharmacy, this is uh, um, yeah, not uh, that it is important, but sometimes it is needed. I have mentioned that in diabetic patients, they have multiple uh, comorbidities, they have hypertension, dyslipidemia, ischemic heart disease, neuropathy, nephropathy, sometimes it is required. So it's, it's sometimes this is called appropriate polypharmacy when multiple drug therapies to manage their complex medical conditions. This is an example, uh, sometimes some prescriptions contain so many drugs, uh, sometimes it is needed. Dr. Avron, he's an, a, a famous uh, geriatrician of Boston, he said then any symptoms, any new symptom in an elderly patient should be considered a drug side effect until proven otherwise. So polypharmacy, common uh, polypharmacy culprits, in, we have observed in our country that anti-ulcer drugs, particularly proton pump inhibitors, this is very commonly written as a medication of gas sometimes uh, different types of benzodiazepines, antidepressant drugs, uh, sometimes laxatives, vitamins, calciums, food supplements. Uh, when I was uh, posted in one of the remote district hospitals of Bangladesh, um, I had one small study on drug defaulters in tuberculosis. Uh, when second time anti-tuberculosis drugs were, has to be started, uh, I uh, had a small study why they stopped medications, anti-tuberculosis medications first time. Uh, there are different, I found that there are different reasons due to ignorance, sometimes due to adverse effects of drugs, due to cost of drugs. Sometimes we have observed that different types of medications are given with anti-tuberculosis drugs, which are sometimes even unnecessary, like multivitamins, anti-tuberculosis drugs, calf expectorants, oral irons. So these are the drugs which are sometimes unnecessary when we prescribe with a serious disease. Uh, so PPI, this is a very commonly prescribed drug in our country also. I, I think this is also a practice in many prescriptions in uh, India also. Uh, in one of my uh, colleague, junior colleague, uh, she uh, did a study on over prescription of proton pump inhibitors on discharge medical, discharge certificates of medical inpatients. Those during um, discharge certificate, we observed that almost uh, 87 patients contain PPI and 28.5% had appropriate indication of giving PPI. So uh, in other cases, there were, there were no absolute indications. So proton pump inhibitors, these are very important drugs. Uh, these are used for peptic ulcer, uh, anti peptic ulcer drugs. This is very important. This has a revolution in the management of peptic ulcer. In other conditions also we use it like reflux esophagitis, Barrett's esophagus, uh, esophagitis. But uh, this should be continued for certain period. There are limited conditions where we, are, we can continue PPI like uh, upper GIT hemorrhage 
or buried sea sarcophagus. So it has been found in many studies that simply if we continue PPI for long time, they can produce echlorhydria and can produce a lot of adverse effect also like vitamin B12 deficiency, osteoporosis, and many other conditions. So what we can do? Can we allow to keep going or do something? So what is the prescription? This is process of withdrawal of inappropriate medical medication supervised by a healthcare professional. This should be uh, is called uh, deprescription. It is systematically defined uh, by uh, Michelle Woodward from uh, Melbourne of Australia that this is a systemic process of identifying and discontinuation of drugs. This is called deprescription. Objective is to plan and supervise process to reduce medication burden, which is considered inappropriate and maintaining or improving in quality of life of patients. So main objective is to optimize the therapy, avoiding adverse effects, improving outcomes, and enhancing and maintaining quality of life. So the prescription has lot of benefits, avoid inappropriate medication, reduce adverse effects, reduce polypharmacy, and reduce the cost on burden on the, uh, the patient. So before uh, deprescription, not only stopping the drug, it is not possible sometimes. There is, we have to mm, mm, follow some steps. So full initial evaluation of the patient is to be done, identifying the potential inappropriate medication, prioritizing the drug for discontinuation, and performing deprescription. The, so this is a deprescription uh, cycle. Uh, there are seven uh, steps. Uh, for uh, at first there is assess the patient, identify, define the goal, identify the medicine, agree, prioritize thing, and uh, finally you, we can be prescribed. So there are a lot of barriers also on the part of the doctors and all the part of the patients. So there is sometimes origin doubts from the physician, multiple professionals are involved uh, in managing a patient. And there are sometimes there are barriers on the part of the patients also. They are psychologically and physically dependent on some uh, drugs, feel abandoned if the medication is stopped. So these are the barriers. So there are different deprescribing modules have been developed um, in different countries like proton pump, PPI module, benzodiazepine module, antipsychotic or anti-diabetic, anti-depression modules. So these are the also some drugs. These are also gabapentin and also clonazepam, alprazolam. These are the drugs also uh, is used uh, in many patients without uh, stopping. So before uh, developing a module, uh, each guideline should answer the following question about the medication, when to stop the drug, when to reduce it, and when to discontinue the drug. So these are the deep prescribing steps. Uh, mm, so mm, uh, uh, one, one 30 seconds more. Sorry for the interruption. So uh, deep I think polypharmacy and deep prescription, this is a very important issue and concern for our present time. time uh, we are to avoid prescribing unnecessary drugs. Thank you. Thank you very much.